Hello everyone. Um, for today's video, I want to tackle um, probably the second most common question I get asked. It ties into a question I have already answered in my very first video, which is the most common question I get asked, which is about humans, fairies, and sex. Yeah, actually is the most common thing I get asked about. But related to that, the second most common thing I get asked is, is it possible for humans to have fairy ancestry? And this is a question that I had been asked on social media. It was on my little to-do list of social media questions to answer. And then it had come up again recently because there's a series of blog um, posts, articles that get shared around. Um, they've been going around for several years now that are sort of a list of uh, you may have fairy blood if, and then these qualifications. Uh, there's several of them. Um, some have seven, some have nine, some have 13 little qualifications to check. Uh, all of them are based very heavily in the postmodern, post-Victorian, New Age understanding of fairies. So they're all things like um, you may have fairy blood if you are very fond of being out in nature or you really like animals animals really like you uh, or you don't like confrontation Just literally like the opposite of every folkloric fairy ever found in an anecdote or story but that aside it's all things like that. And uh, one of the difficulties with these lists and articles that go around is that uh, when we look at the different things, some of them are oddly specific. Um, one of the ones I've seen going around has to do with like your, your body temperature tends to run lower than the normal human ones. That's fairly oddly specific, but the majority of them are things that really can apply to quite a lot of humans, um, human beings. And because of that, when these uh, blog articles go around, you may have fairy blood if, uh, most people who check them out of the seven or nine or 13 or however many qualifications are going to meet um, the majority of them, uh, or at least, you know, a considerable number of them, because they're just kind of general. And particularly within the, the pagan community or, um, you know, that sort of strata of people out there, uh, you tend to get a lot of people who will say, you know, like 10 out of these 13 things apply to me. Do I have fairy blood? And that's complicated. Um, so for this particular video, I thought I would tackle the question because it has been asked to me previously. I just hadn't gotten around to answering it in a video uh, because it is trending again. I am seeing it on social media again. Um, do, can, I should say, can humans have fairy ancestry? Do some humans have fairy ancestry? How does that work? What would that look like? And so on. I want to preface this before we dig into the actual answer by saying that I am not in this video going to get into the concept of other kin. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with that, other kin um, is the idea of human bodied people who have the um, soul or spirit. Generally, I'm, I'm kind of making a broad generalization here of uh, a non human being. Uh, I'm not going to get into that here because that really is a different topic. It would have to be a completely different video, um, different subject. And it, it's very metaphysical to get into um, trying to dig into the answer of that particular question and even that entire subject. Um, we'd be, we'd have to look into what you as an individual believe about souls and spirits, reincarnation, physical incarnation, um, what you think about how that all works. And that would be a very different video from this one. So not talking about other kin here. I am purely addressing what we have in folklore 
that looks at the idea of uh, a human being who may have um, fairy ancestry. Is that possible? Uh, do we have accounts of that happening? What would that look like? And so on. So, um, the, the basic question itself, uh, according to folklore, is it possible for uh, someone born of a human parent to also have an otherworldly parent? That's pretty straightforward, and the answer would be yes, according to folklore, um, and even according to anecdotal material, um, if we're digging into some of the anecdotes over the last hundred years or so. Uh, this would be looking at Irish, uh, Scottish, uh, in particular, um, some Norse, Icelandic, um, pretty much all across that range, you're going to find the answer to this is yes. Um, the idea simply being that it, it's possible uh, for a, a human parent to produce a child with a, an otherworldly parent. Usually the human parent would be a mother um, who would uh, have a tryst or an assignation with uh, an otherworldly person um, and then become pregnant by that and give birth to a child. We do have accounts in the material, though, of um, human men who would take an otherworldly lover, female, um, and that otherworldly lover would then give birth to a child. Um, what happens to that child varies depending on the story. Sometimes the child remains in the other world. Um, we do have cases, though, where the child remains in the human world, which is sort of what we're focusing on in this particular answer. Um, you can kind of see this across the breadth of fairy lore. Um, not so much with the the good folk who are known to be more homicidally inclined towards humans. Um, red caps, no. Um, Ishiki water horses, generally no. Um, Kelpies, though, yes. Uh, there there is a strain of folklore to do with Kelpies where they would take a human lover, again, generally female in most of the stories. A child would be produced. Um, sometimes the human woman would escape with the child. Sometimes she would figure out after having the child that the father was in fact um, a Kelpie and then flee, leaving the child behind. In some cases, the stories relate that the human woman was kidnapped and held prisoner by the Kelpie. Entire thing, very non-consensual. Produced a child, eventually escaped, and so on. Um, we also see this with, uh, for example, the um, the Ushla, the gentry and the Irish, um, human women often taken, and then other people who interact with them. Uh, the story of the fairy midwife springs immediately to mind. They produce a child, and so the story goes. Uh, but we do also have accounts where the human woman is not actually taken out of this world, out of the human world, but nonetheless does have a child. And there's um, quite a strain of this, particularly with the Selkie lore, um, where, for example, the human man uh, kidnaps, coerces the Selkie woman, usually by stealing her seal skin into becoming his wife. Um, they then generally have quite a lot of children together before the Selkie eventually finds her skin and escapes back to the sea. Uh, all of those children, you know, uh, by definition, would be half human and half Selkie, but they are raised and live in the human world. There's quite a lot of folkloric accounts and anecdotal accounts of uh, such children who are then born with um, webbed hands and feet, fingers and toes. Um, it has, of course, been suggested by some scholars that the idea of these children being part Selkie or having that back in their heritage is a way to explain this particular deformity running in a family. Just putting that out there. But it is certainly something that we find uh, quite a bit in the folklore and in anecdotal accounts. Um, we also have uh, one version of the story of the um, fairy flag of the Macleods in Scotland is that it was given um, to the Lord of the Macleods because he had a fairy lover um, and the child was produced, the child was left with him. 
The fairy flag was given to him then as sort of a token. There's variations of this story. Um, that's one that I have heard. So the idea that you can, in fact, have this ancestry certainly found in folklore. Um, and I could go on because I could probably do an hour video just of examples from folklore of this. Um, and I'm only touching on the ones that immediately spring to mind. Do people today, do humans today in the world today still have some of this ancestry? Is it possible? I mean, anything's possible. Uh, if you believe that fairies exist, that they continue to exist in the world, um, certainly it's as possible today as it was a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. I guess I, I'll leave it at that. Um, we, we do find an abundance of folkloric and anecdotal accounts. Um, I'm not going to say that it could not be true in the world today. Uh, it's worth noting that it would certainly not be common. And um, it would be something that would have been sort of rumored or known in the family. Um, it's not quite a um, bizarre conception exactly, but uh, there would have been odd circumstances going on. Um, usually the children born of these sorts of unions um, are considered unusual or odd themselves. Uh, they're noted, again, looking at the bulk of the folklore. Um, the Selkie children, as I mentioned, tend to have um, webbed hands and feet. Um, they also tend to have dark hair and dark eyes uh, and are noted to be good fishermen. Um, children of other types of unions would have some qualities sort of reflecting back on the otherworldly parents. Um, often they're noted to be just sort of different, um, not fitting in well with the humans around them, and not in the sense that, that you know, everyone is going to have those points, every human, normal human is going to have those points where they feel like they don't fit in, um, but genuine strangeness, um, genuinely not um, meshing with people around them, humans around them. Um, and I also want to emphasize this is not like a neurotypical versus um, neuroatypical kind of thing either. Um, being neuroatypical does not mean that you are not actually human. Uh, see my changeling video for more on that. Completely different sort of thing. Um, children of these unions are usually said to be either unusually charismatic or unusually off-putting to those around them. Um, often described as looking somewhat unusual, um, sometimes very pale, um, sometimes very beautiful, sometimes very not beautiful. Um, but there's always sort of something inherently about them that makes other humans uneasy or just sort of marks them out as being different. Um, people, other humans, sort of immediately notice that they are not like everyone else. Uh, so they stand out, as it were. Sometimes they have particular talents or abilities, like I mentioned with the, the part Selkie children and the fishing, that would connect back to whatever their particular ancestry is. Um, sometimes they have a particularly strong connection to the other world. Uh, sometimes they end up leaving to join the other world and their, their otherworldly parent in, in that world. Um, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they stay in the human world and then have um, children in the human world. And then it just sort of goes on and on. And it just becomes a story of, you know, the, the ancestor of this particular family line um, is said to be, you know, part otherworldly or part of this other lineage. So... And the ultimate answer to the question is, is it possible? According to folklore, yes. Is it likely? Mm, probably not as likely, unless you already have uh, stories in your family. Um, although anything is possible. Um, does it still happen today? It's as likely today as it ever has been. And I will leave it at that. 
Um, but certainly when we, when we look at the folklore, when we look at it, it's not going to be the sorts of things that we see sort of rampaging around social media and these, you may have fairy blood if kind of, uh, things that go around. Um, it would be very different, um, just very different. Uh, so some food for thought, but that is the answer to the question. Um, you do find it sort of all over the place in folklore. Um, there's a lot of belief in the idea that the other crowd um, have difficulty reproducing or have low numbers. There just aren't a lot of them. And they look to humans to supplement that. Um, hence why this sort of crossbreeding, cross-reproduction thing goes on. Um, Oftentimes, if there are children, they would not stay in this world. Uh, so I will sort of put that out there, that um, if children were produced, they would be taken out of this world um, to go with the otherworldly parent. But um, is it what we tend to portray it as or think of it as um, in modern terms? No. Um, I think there's a little too much young adult fiction. I realize I'm sitting right now in front of an entire bookshelf of basically like young adult urban fantasy full of fairies, but um, a little too much of that influence going on with how people are currently sort of perceiving this concept. Um, generally, when we look at the stories, it does not end well at all for the human partner, and it's problematic or difficult for the child that's produced, particularly if they remain in this world. So um, arguably not a, a good thing. Um, and once you start to get down into a family line, if, if you could say that you have a fairy ancestor multiple generations back, um, what that actually means for you is probably very limited. Um, like being able to say you can trace your ancestry back, you know, 200 years, 300 years to a particular famous human it doesn't mean a great deal to you personally, except that you can say it. So that's the answer to the question. Uh, maybe a little bit of food for thought as well. Um, maybe keep this in mind the next time you see one of those little tests going around asking if you have fairy blood. Um, give it some thought. Uh, they are fun to take. I always like to read through them and check off all the yes answers, but maybe don't take them quite so seriously. Have a great day, and I will eventually post another video. If you have any specific questions about fairies and folklore, uh, feel free to drop a question in the comments, and I will try to eventually get around to doing a video about it. Have a great day.